everybody. I'm going to start the program this evening um, kind of on time because we have a really exciting panel and the film is an hour and a half. So I want to make sure we get a lot of good Q&A and conversation in. I do want to welcome everybody and thank you all so much for coming, um, particularly all of the volunteers, the Westford Academy kids, all of the hardworking, dedicated volunteers that really give a lot to our mission, true believers. Thank you very much. Um, also, I want to acknowledge our sponsors. Um, they have um, really helped push the mission forward and help give us programs like this, um, which really do help motivate and inspire and educate all of us. So you are all here because we share and deeply care about the environment health, and each other. Um, you can register and sign up for other events here tonight up at the front. Uh, there's drinks. Please help yourself. There's organic popcorn. Thank you very much, Sharon and Tossie. Um, and please help yourself. A little bit about Sustainable Westford. Um, it came out of six years ago from the Westford Farmers Market, which takes place, if you don't know, out on the common. Um, this is part of the winter series. We have 10 events this winter, all about sustainability from health, environmental, um, and we're probably going to explore alternative, alternative forms of energy as well. Um, we also have an upcycle program, which is a part of recycling. Um, Christina, where are you? Oh, want to stand up? Um, Christina is um, the founder of Upcycle. Do you want to just mention something about it? Hello, everyone. So my name is Christina Green, and I started the Upcycle program about two and a half years ago in May of 2010. And if you're not familiar with it, we collect things that are normally not recyclable, such as potato chip bags, um, energy bar wrappers, used up pens. There are certain specific categories and we have some information back there. We send these to a company called TerraCycle. They then upcycle them into new products. Um, and we get paid two cents for every item we send in, which doesn't sound like a lot of money, but since May of 2010, our latest total is close to $8,000. Wow. And that money goes back to the schools to school groups, teachers, um, in the form of mini grants. So we have had um, a teacher at Abbott School with her third graders doing a recycling and upcycling project to educate the rest of their school. Um, we planted trees, there have been several other projects. So it's a nice way to give back and to teach the kids how to conserve resources. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. We have other programs, such as the Westford Academy Mentor Program. I think, um, can all of the Westford Academy students please, and we're talking alumni in the group, I think Aisha is in the group. She's a market, three years ago, a market manager. <laughs> Stand up, or it's the girl turning bright red in the back. Um, they run the farmer's market. Oh, Corey is here. Corey, yay. She was our former market manager. John, John, stand up, please. Would you like to just say a word or two on behalf of the You know, uh, I think I speak for all the volunteers when I say that we're all proud to help support these great events and such for the Winter Series and for the Farmer's Market because that really helps bring the community together in a real profound way that otherwise would be hard for us, you know, young people to experience. Um, so tonight, it's all about the food. And um, I'd love to introduce your, the esteemed panelists. Phil Jones is a local organic farmer from the next town over. He's a leader and a nutrient-dense advocate. So we know where to get our good food. Um, Linda Leland, okay. Linda is a certified um, holistic health coach dedicated to building her knowledge around healthy foods and vitality. She received her training in, at Integrative Nutrition in New York City. She's certified by the American Association of Drugless Practitioners. 
She also holds a bachelor's in natural health and a student at Rice Thomas Institute of Energy Medicine and is a raw food chef and a nutritional educator. Is that about all? Okay. Um, last but certainly not least, Helen, Helen Fu is a certified Chinese herbalist nutritionalist and a holistic health counselor and she's recently moved into West Bird. So um, she is one of the few practitioners that truly understands and combines both oriental and western holistic healing. Helen specializes in Chinese medicine, emotional healing, nutrition, diabetes, and cancer. She has also been a student of both Dr. T. Colin Campbell and Dr. Poppin both in this film. Um, the film is based on, a, on the China study, um, talking about the relationships of consumption of animal products and um, a variety of chronic illnesses. Um, I, we're gonna start the film after Helen, please, opens. Welcome, Helen Fu. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. As uh, Gloria just mentioned, uh, we are new, brand new in Westford. Just moved here in August from Kansas. But I'm not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> I was born and raised in China. When I was about 12 years old, I met a 92-year-old Chinese fortune teller. She took one look at me and said, you are a healer. You were born to heal the world. Wow, that's so cool. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? I had no clue. <laughs> Many years later, I found myself in a hospital in China. It was a white and quiet room. The doctor's words still echo in my mind. He said, Helen, I'm sorry. Your mom has stage four pancreatic cancer. She has at most three months to live. I said, what do you mean? You're a doctor, right? I'm sure you can help my mom. So sorry. It's too late. There's nothing we can do. What would you do if it was your mom? I've decided to really study and learn about cancer so I can help my mom. With Chinese herbs, diet, nutrition, detox programs, my mom not only survived, but thrived for 18 years from stage four pancreatic cancer. The doctors said it was unheard of. They claimed it was a miracle. So my passion is really to help as many people as I can to share with them about the knowledge I have. Have you ever tried to search for true health but felt overwhelmed and confused? Have you ever tried a diet that helped your neighbor or coworker but didn't work for you? Have you ever wondered whether there's such a thing as one health program that fits all? I think the greatest difference between Chinese medicine and the Western medicine is because in Chinese medicine, we believe Everyone is special. Everyone is individual. Everyone is unique. That's why we don't ever try to treat symptoms because you can have 15, 20 different symptoms, but they may come from the same root causes. That's why our job is to try to help you understand the root causes of your health issues so that we can treat you as a whole person, spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical. You are not a machine. We can't just replace a part, cut off a part, or burn and zap it. You are a person. So that's why it's really, really important to understand what is the health issue? What is the challenge you are facing? A diet that's great for your neighbor or even your spouse might not be the same thing for you. Have you ever had, heard the saying, one man's food can be another one's poison? So that's why I want, well, I want to raise the awareness in you before we watch the movie that keep in mind, there's no such a thing as one diet fits all. 
even though I've studied with Dr. Popper and Dr. Colin Campbell, but I don't totally agree with what they say. So you are unique, and keep in mind that you have the total power to control your health, to take charge of your health. No one, no doctors, no medications or surgeries can heal you, but you. You have the power within you. Thank you very much. And of course, there's more things that we actually do, um, as well as Next Step Living is here, and um, right after Anna speaks, um, I'm not, um, I need to introduce Tasi, who also runs our Healthy Kids Coalition. Hi, Anna Fadden, and this is uh, Alex Anopoulos. We work for Next Step Living. Um, I actually live just in the next town over in Littleton, and um, we are uh, working to connect Westford residents with the Mass Save program. So if you haven't heard about the Mass Save program, please stop by out there, and uh, Alex will tell you all about it. As an additional incentive, anybody that signs up tonight for the Mass Save program that's eligible, um, a, a donation will be made to Sustainable Westford, so it's a good time to sign up tonight um, if you can. Um, so some of you might know but might not know that your home is somewhat like a car. It needs to be maintained and uh, that's kind of what our company helps do. We help fine tune your home, we, we try to assess as best we can how your home's performing around energy and when you go through a home energy assessment not only are you going to have uh, light bulbs upgraded, water saving measures upgraded to your home, but you'll also have an opportunity to really learn about your home and see how it's performing. So you can make educated uh, decisions if you're doing over your kitchen or if a certain room feels drafty, we can help you identify why that's happening. So uh, again, it's, uh, we work for Next Step Living and uh, we work with the Mass Aid program, which is all funded through your National Grid and NSTAR uh, utility providers. Um, thank you. Tansi, Healthy Kids Coalition. Hi, I'm Tasi O'Malley, and um, I'm running the Healthy Kids Coalition this year. We were founded two years ago, and um, our two big projects this year are, one, we're working with the Westford Public School System to slowly but surely reform the school lunch menu, make it a lot healthier. And the other is we're raising funds for the Chefs in Schools program, which we piloted this year, and hope to have enough money to continue next year. And if you want to buy a book, the proceeds will support that later. Um, you might be wondering why I have a fork and some knives in my hands. It's just to remind you as you watch the film that if you look closely at the movie poster, it's not forks over knives, a steak knife. Um, the, the vegetables are definitely great for your healthy eating and they can do wonders to um, both stop disease and reverse the ill effects that you've already had from diseases. But especially thinking of our children, even if you don't have children, just any children that come into your lives that you eat with at the holidays or you babysit or come in contact with, we'd like you to be a good example for them. We'd like you to um, eat healthy in front of them and encourage them to try new foods. Because for them, it's forks over knives and the knife is a scalpel. This, this knife represents um, the surgeries and all the medical treatment and all of the um, procedures that we just view as normal these days to get to a healthy 100 years old. Um, so for them, it's really about prevention. So remember, forks over knives when you're interacting with the kids. Thanks. By 1978, he was chairman of the Breast Cancer Task Force at the Cleveland Clinic. Yet he soon began to doubt the medical procedures he was using. No matter how many of these operations I was doing for women for breast cancer, I wasn't doing one single thing for the next unsuspecting victim. So Dr. Esselstyn started investigating the global statistics on breast cancer. One of the facts he discovered was that the incidence of breast cancer in Kenya was far lower than it was in the United States. In fact, in 1978, the chances of a woman getting breast cancer in Kenya were 82 times lower than in the U.S. Dr. Esselstyn was even more surprised by the numbers he discovered for some other types of cancer. In the entire nation, 
of Japan in 1958, how many autopsy proven deaths were there from cancer of the prostate? 18. 18 in the entire nation. That, to me, was about the most mind-boggling public health figure that I, I think I'd ever encountered. In the same year, the U.S. population was only about twice the size of Japan's. Yet the number of prostate cancer deaths exceeded 14,000. Dr. Esselstyn also discovered that in the early 1970s, the risk for heart disease in rural China was 12 times lower than it was in the U.S. And in the highlands of Papua New Guinea, heart disease was rarely encountered. The link he noted between all the areas he studied was simple. Virtually, the Western diet was non-existent. They had no animal products. They had no dairy, no meat. Even more compelling to Esselstyn was some historical data that had long been overlooked. In World War II, the Germans occupied Norway. Among the first things they did was confiscate all the livestock and farm animals to provide supplies for their own troops. So the Norwegians were forced to eat mainly plant-based foods. Now we look at the deaths in Norway, just antecedent to this period, from heart attack and stroke. 1927, 1930, 35, look at right up here, right at the very top, 1939. Bingo! In come the Germans. Immediately, 1940, wow, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Have we ever seen a population have their cardiovascular disease plummet like this from statins, from bypass surgery, or from stents? No. But look what immediately happened. With the cessation of hostilities in 1945, back comes the meat, back comes the dairy, back comes the strokes and heart attacks. I mean, it's such an absolute powerful lesson. But uh, we didn't get it. I think it's, um, we're in a tough situation right now with the quality of the food in this country, and uh, especially in the vegetables. And, and uh, we test the quality of our food, and, and when you test it, it's, it's sadly lacking. I don't care where you buy it. Um, the nutrition levels are, are, are extremely low. So you want to be careful. Eat, eat diverse. And I think, the, I think the movie talks about some great, great things. But it's, uh, it's a struggle to get really good food, I think. I think it's critical that if you can grow your own food, grow it. Because you're going to grow better food than you're going to be buying. Um, I know we try really hard. We're, we're growing some stuff. I have some samples here if you'd like. Things that we grew this winter and uh, with no heat in greenhouses and um, we're trialing like 13 vegetables so there's uh, hopes that we can grow things all year long um, there's a way that we grow it that handles cold quite a bit better uh, and uh, maybe we can talk about that some other time later or something but um, I think the movie makes great points you know if we're going to be healthy we need we need the diversity of, of the plants and um, when you start to learn it the way, the way we try to learn it, I think it's, uh, um, it's critical at how um, intelligent the system is, um, how we work with creating the life in the soil and life force energy in the plants so that um, they create things that are amazingly healing for the body. And on that, I'd pass it on, but, but uh, I, think, I think the movie's well, well done, and I think mo for, for the most part, I agree with almost all of it. Food, it's central to our lives and traditions. Every special occasion seems to involve food and feasting. But could some of these same foods, including several that we think are good for our health, also be causing many of our most serious health problems? Indeed, we're facing a massive health crisis. No less than 40% of Americans today are obese. And about half of us are taking some form of prescription drug. The best-known statin drug, Lipitor, is the most prescribed drug ever in the world. Almost one in five American four-year-olds are now considered to be obese. Though Mexican-American and African-American children are still more likely to be overweight. This could be the first generation of children in the United States that lives less than its parents. We spend $2.2 trillion a year on health care, over five times more than the defense budget. In fact, we pay more per person for health care than any industrialized country in the world. Yet we're sicker than ever. You see, there's no money in healthy people. 
and there's no money in dead people. The money is in the middle. People who are alive, sort of, but with one or more chronic conditions. Obesity, diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure are all diet-related health issues that cost this country more than $120 billion each year. Every minute, a person in the U.S. is killed by heart disease. 1,500 people a day die from cancer. Combined, these two diseases kill over one million Americans every year. Cases of diabetes are skyrocketing, particularly among our younger population. Diabetes. Diabetes. Life-threatening diabetes. One out of three people born in the U.S. today will develop this crippling condition during their lifetime. Millions of others suffer from a host of degenerative diseases. Millions more of us are so stimulated by sugar, coffee, and energy drinks that we've masked our chronic fatigue. But could there be a single solution to all of these problems? A solution so comprehensive, yet so straightforward, that it's mind-boggling that more of us haven't taken it seriously? Someone has to stand up and say that the answer isn't another pill. The answer is spinach. A growing number of researchers claim that if we eliminate or greatly reduce refined, processed, and animal-based foods, we can prevent, and in certain cases even reverse, several of our worst diseases. They say all we need to do is adopt a whole foods, plant-based diet. It sounds almost too simple to be true. Diet and nutrition, I think everybody agrees, it's very important. And one mistake I've seen in a lot of people's decision which diet to go is generalization. We cannot generalize. And as I mentioned earlier, there's no such a thing as one diet fits all because everybody is different. So what kind of diet is the best for you really depends on your nutritional type, whether you are protein type or you are the natural vegetarian type or you are mixed. So, and also, depending on what your current health is, the condition of your health. For example, uh, when I teach health classes, and I often talk about um, the five root causes of um, any health issues, it doesn't matter what, what labels or what symptoms uh, you can put on this. Basically, a lot of people, I call it A, B, C, D plus E. So A is to activate your body with enzymes. Most people have enzyme deficiency nowadays. And of course, you know, the processed foods, the chemicals, and all of this, you know, pesticides, yeah, microwaves, they, they kill the enzymes and cooking. And so a lot of people have not enough enzymes from the foods you eat. And also, when we age, according to studies, we lose 13% enzymes per decade, which means every 10 years, you lose 13% of enzymes. So by the age you are 40, most people have enzyme deficiency. So it doesn't matter what foods you eat. You know, it could be the best diet or the most organic foods, but if you don't have the enzymes, your body cannot break it down, cannot digest it. So that's one of the root causes. Of course, malnutrition, surprisingly, it, it, it's one of the other problems. So a lot of people, I think most Americans are overfed but malnourished. Just because you eat a lot of foods doesn't mean that your body absorb it. And so a lot of people actually have um, all these foods that have um, very low nutritional lo level where your body just cannot get the nutrition. And then another problem is toxic overload. So th that's why I talk about A, activates your body with enzymes, and B is to build your body with real nutrients. And then C is to cleanse your body, because most people have toxic overload. And so um, when your body is overly toxic, then of course um, you, you get diseases, either diabetes or heart, heart disease or cancer. And so another one is D, D is direct aid. We need to know and understand what is the critical system in your body that needs to be balanced. And so I mentioned in Chinese medicine, we always try to understand the root causes of your health issues and we balance the system. So everybody has 10 body systems, you know, um, immune system, digestive system, um, circulatory system. And so um, depending on what your body's current stage is 
and so we balance the system. And it's like a domino effect. Once one system goes, a lot of other system, you know, continue to go. And so by the time a lot of clients who who come to me, they are pretty much at the last domino. <laughs> so we have to go all the way back and try to figure out, okay, which systems we need to uh, balance and and then um, E is another very important issue, emotional health. Because uh, we believe that most of our health issues, physical health issues, come from unresolved emotional issues. And so that's why we always try to find out, you know, what emotional issues we need to work on. And so when you understand your body, when you try to listen to your body, actually, you will have the power to prevent or heal any health issues. Um, my take on the movie, I really loved some parts of the movie. I loved that they showed some physicians that were nutritionally based. I think that's fantastic. Um, it's great to watch all the people uh, heal from disease when they change their, the way they're eating, when they change their nutrition. Um, I too believe in uh, there's not one size fits all for everybody. I've been trained, I've been lucky enough to learn all 100 nutritional modalities. I believe in bio, I believe in, um, you know, everybody's completely different. Um, there's bio-individuality, and people ask me all the time, you know, should I eat eggs? Should I have dairy? Or um, It's really different for everybody. It's, um, that's what I do. That's, I help people figure out uh, what diet's best for them. I, I too, work with very sick people. Um, the parts of the movie that I wasn't, um, you know, I don't, wasn't really fond of was I felt like they really lumped um, meat, all sorts of meat, you know, the, the way that they showed meat was McDonald's or Oscar Mayer Wieners or, you know, this disgusting meat that I would never eat. Um, I couldn't, actually, I could, I, I've watched it a few times and each time, I advise you all to go back and see it again and how well they did that. You know, the cow had this big sod hanging out of its nose and oh, it was horrible. Um, I do believe that there is a place in some, in some people's diet for quality meat. I would never, ever eat or recommend anyone eat conventionally raised meat, eggs, dairy, any of it. I think that is uh, a real problem. Um, I think a lot of this, I've, I've studied some of these studies here and I think, you know, there, there's some good points but there's some things that are, that are left out or there's definitely some arguments there. Um, for instance, in 1950, uh, the incidence of cancer was one in 50. Uh, today, it's one in three for women, and it's one in two for men. Well, plenty of people were eating meat, good, clean meat, back then. They were eating bacon and eggs in the morning. I don't believe that it is the villain as much as processed food as the Pop-Tarts and the Tater Tots and the Cheez-Its and the Goldfish. Um, that, to me, is the, the bigger problem. Uh, even studies of cholesterol now, it's not pointing towards saturated fat. It's, it's really focused on sugar and processed foods, and I think that's where our biggest problem lies. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that, um, I, mean, I work at Groton Wellness, we're a holistic dental practice, a holistic medical practice. Uh, the dentists there will tell you they rarely see good bone structure in people who don't eat animal protein. Good teeth and good bone structure. I'm not saying, I'm not against that, I just don't think it's for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think meat's for everyone either, so I think um, it really depends on, on you um, if you've ever studied anything by Weston A. Price or Sally Fallon, they too have extensive studies on the healthiest cultures across the world. And one of the things that the, all of those cultures had in common, according to their studies, was they all ate animal protein. Some ate very few vegetables. Um, if, you if you study Dr. Dodamo, Dr. Beer, uh, they will tell you about the blood type diet. Uh, if your blood type is O, you really need f animal protein to thrive. A doesn't need so much. B is a little 50-50, so there are many, many, many theories. Um, what I do is help people weed through all that information because uh, it can be so confusing, I know. I, was, I, went, I read the China study, and I said, never again will I eat meat. Um, and for me, I got kind of really weak and really cold, and it uh, just wasn't for me. Um, but, you know, so that's the beauty of studying all these different diets. You get to try them all, which makes me, um, you know, I, and, I, and I love food. Um, I love anything and everything to do with food. I love to heal people with food. I love to love people with food. I think it's a fantastic thing that we all need to be friends with. Um, but again, I don't think that all meat uh, is the villain.
So. I could just say one thing about, about meat and, and how it's raised. When we're talking about the beef that's raised today, it's relatively sick. And, and when they showed you, they, they, they raised that cattle, um, the cows on grasses, and then they, were, then they were, were not on grasses for three years. Grass-fed beef is an omega-3 beef. And it's how the, how the cattle were, were always raised in the old days. Everybody got a lot sicker when we took everything off the grasses, the chickens off the grasses, the turkey. They're even taking some of the grass-fed beef now and they're feeding it one month of grain to, to, to make the meat softer because they get weaker. You look at a, a milking cow today, years ago, 10, 12 years would be an average age. Now it's one and a half years. They said three to four. That's because they have them on the grasses for a while. There's a huge problem in this country now where the cattle are so sick they can't get a cow, uh, a, a, a steer to have a calf in two years now. It used to only be a year. They used to be able to have a calf every year. Because of the grains and stuff, they're only allowed to get a calf about every year, year and a half to two now. So they have, the, the, the cost is going to become explosive for some of this stuff. And it's really about, about the health and how they raise it. So the food, I, I would so agree with that. You know, it's really, it's really about the, the health and how they eat. Um, for the panelists, if you don't like sitting down and you would rather just sit on the table, please um, feel free. Uh, I kind of think it's a little bit, it might be a little bit tough up there for you. Um, I think we should, um, I think this um, group looks highly educated with um, some of the nutritional issues, um, farm issues, and I think maybe we should just take some great um, questions because um, I'm sure there are, are a ton of them. So. Um, if there are any questions, I think we can just um, take them now and um, just pass it along to whoever can comment on it best. Did you say you prefer raw milk? No, I said almond milk. Almond milk, okay, yes. Um, I think there are a lot of studies um, that you can research. I'm not a huge fan of, of pasteurized, homogenized milk. A lot of the studies now, a lot of the chemicals that they're giving those cows so that they'll keep producing milk. Um, is causing them to die, and to, the milking cows to die in two years, and because they're pr producing milk the entire time, this RBHT. Uh, they just did a study of, of all sorts of homogenized milk, and most of it was found. Uh, these these udders are getting infected, so most of the milk that we drink has, I'm sorry, but it has pus in it. <laughs> um, it's 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 really not the like. It's one thing that I do agree with as far as the movie. It's really not where we need to get all of our calcium or any of it. It's um, I believe that it's fairly useless on our diet. We are the only species that's drinking another species breast milk. Um, I am an advocate of raw milk because I am an advocate of anything the way God gave it to us uh, without us processing it. And so I think that that can be a superfood for some people. Um, however, I do not believe that um, we need to give our kids milk, um, you know, at, as soon as they're weaned. I agree. Um, it really depends on what is the nutritional type. According to the blood type diet, actually, blood type B people are the only people who can eat dairy products, but it has to be organic, raw milk. And then for the other people, I've seen thousands of clients who, who, who came to me and with, with all kinds of um, problems with digestion, with we call in Chinese medicine cold digestion, with lots of dairy products, it, it produces a lot of mucus. And so um, it, it, it's very hard to digest. So for people who have a very weak digestive system or who have like irritable bowel syndromes or celiac disease, anything like that, uh, dairy products will be the first to go, of course, and the gluten. And so, um, but again, we can't uh, overgeneralize because a lot of people thought milk is good. Uh, calcium is good. But the problem is that uh, according to the movie, you also see that um, in the countries who, with people who um, consume the most amount of milk, actually, they have the worst problems with their bones. Just because calcium, your body cannot use calcium without the balanced magnesium and vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 deficiency and, cal uh, and magnesium deficiency probably are some of the biggest problems in this country because um, just from the diet, we don't get enough magnesium and uh, a lot of people don't get enough uh, vitamin D3, even though 
uh, you thought the milk is fortified with vitamin D, but your body cannot use it. So it's totally different. And so without the balanced magnesium and vitamin D3, the calcium supplementation or the calcium from dairy products will calcify your body, calcify your bones and your organs. And so they cause problems with arthritis. That's why this calcium actually that deposited in your joints causing arthritis. They are deposited in your muscles causing fibromyalgia. How many people have all these pains? So that's the reason why uh, we do a lot of uh, magnesium therapy, you know, trying to give people large doses of magnesium and vitamin D3 so that the calcium deposited in your body can be uh, dissolved. And so that's why um, I usually wouldn't say you should or shouldn't take uh, milk. It really depends on, again, what is your body's nutritional type. Uh, okay. okay, so following up on sort of letting go of that milk, what, what about like something like yogurt? It's the same thing, dairy. It's the same thing? Dairy products are dairy products. So where would you get the calcium from? A, a supplement? Or? Vegetables. 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 Vegetables should, well, you should be loaded with calcium, but uh, there should be a lot of calcium in, in uh, structurally, especially the greens. Yeah. You, know, you want to be with the greens. Anything um, we would consider it a male vegetable in, in the way we uh, feed our plants, but um, any of the greens, any of your broccolis, any of that, the relationship with, with calcium is totally different, so um, as opposed to the fruiting vegetables. Um, one thing I'd like, like to say, though, is you remember our grandmothers used to say, chew your milk? Well, once they homogenized it, as I understand it, it's very hard for the body to break that down to make it available to the body. And that's why it goes to calcification so easily. So if you can keep it in your mouth longer and allow the saliva to work on it and really give it time, it becomes, from what I understand, quite a bit more available. Now, I haven't seen actual studies on it. I've just heard people, when I was researching raw milk, um, and, and really looking at raw milk, uh, um, that's when I found out about it. And um, th there, there is some good data. I think it's from the California um, organic milk producers out there is where I, where I read about it. But if you're interested, I think you could find it there. Is the calcium in almond milk or soy milk easier to absorb than dairy for the body? I again think is that I think an equal I equal or better source of calcium. I would I think it depends on how it's grown, how it's how they're made, how they're processed. I think it all depends on many many things. We 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 sell Shaw milk at our farm and I have young boys that can drink Shaw milk but they can't drink Gorelick. Okay, the bacteria are higher in some of these and when they pasteurize, the histamine levels get higher. So, it's all the way the stuff is grown. It's what's in the soil. What do they do to treat to grow the stuff. Where's it coming from? The only thing I'd like to say about soy is, boy, be careful and make sure it's organic. You know, 96% of all soy in this country is genetically engineered. Genetically engineered soy makes me sick as a dog. All farm-raised fish are fed with genetically engineered soy, so be careful. What about almond milk? That, I, I don't know enough. All I know is that, well, you probably know more about it. Thank you. Well, um, not all even vegetables or fruits are good for everybody. So th there's something that we need to understand because uh, like the movie promotes um, plant source foods. I, I agree in principles. I think plant source, you know, plant-based whole foods diet overall is good for us. But um, there are certain vegetables or fruits that probably are not good for you because 50% um, of the foods, they are neutral, they're foods. Everybody can eat them. Another 50% of the foods have specific food lactins, um, specific protein molecules that are either for your type or against your type. So for example, almonds, they are not good for type B people. And like soy products are not good for type B people. Um, but uh, they are like neutral probably for the other types or highly beneficial for different types. So that's why, it, it, again, it's very individualized. And for people, for example, who eat soy products, in China we've been eating, we, that's our main protein source for thousands of years, basically, soy protein. But again, it's organic soy protein. You cannot eat a GMO soy, and which you know, causes a lot of problems. And also, 
soy protein probably uh, for men, you know, you don't want to consume large amount of soy protein because of the phytoestrogens. You know, it lowers testosterone level. So it need to, needs to be balanced. Joey Coyne lives in Tampa, Florida, where he owns and operates a landscaping company. I tell everybody, the joke with everybody with me is, I don't eat to live, I live to eat. And I, my whole life, I ate whatever I wanted. In 2004, doctors discovered Joey had a dangerously high cholesterol level of 320 and a hazardous blood sugar level of 480. This not only made him a type 2 diabetic, but a prime candidate for a heart attack and a stroke. And this is my daily pill regimen. Um, I got two pills I take for my diabetes, then I got one for cholesterol, one for high blood pressure, and then I take Bieta, which is an injectable medicine, every morning before breakfast and every night before dinner. And that's what I've been doing for almost four years now. And I know it makes me tired, and I just, I just don't feel normal. I only sleep four hours a night or so. I just hate taking them. Your body is a brilliant biocomputer. It will tell you. It's hard to feel that or to notice that when you're, when you're numbed out with processed food. But the cleaner you start to eat, uh, you can really figure out, you can really feel what, um, what makes you strong and full of energy and what, what drains you or gives you pain. Um, it's, you know, it's pretty easy. That's, that's what I help people to do. I want to add something. Allergies, food allergies, or any type of allergies, just is so prevalent. And I've seen that in so many people, including a lot of kids. One thing you, I want you to understand is that if you have any food allergies, or if you have any type of allergies, most probably you have leaky gut syndromes. Leaky gut is one of the most overlooked link in most people's health issues. And how do people get leaky gut? So um, I, I talk to my clients all the time about this. When you eat foods that are not good for your type, or uh, when you eat foods that your body, does, uh, your body doesn't have the uh, enzymes to break it down, these foods are actually are packed into a colon walls. So now I want everybody to put your middle finger and your thumb together. Can everybody do that? Yeah. So that's how big your colon is, about five or six feet long. But imagine when you start to eat the foods that's packed layers upon layers on your colon walls, actually what happens is that your colon gets expanded. Some of my clients' colon gets this big. And as a result, your colon walls get stretched so thin and it starts leaky. And so if you look at some of the overweight people, they have like a big, you know, pouch here. That's not just all from the fat under the skin. Mostly that's from the undigested foods, old fecal matter packed in the colon walls. And so an average American has five to 25 pounds of undigested old fecal matter in the colon. If you are overweight, you have more than 25 pounds. Some people, some of my clients have over 50 pounds of undigested old fecal matter in their colon. And so that's why the first step to your health is that you have to learn how to heal your gut. When your gut is leaky, if you eat these foods and the foods are not um, digested or they are partially digested, the food particles will leak into your bloodstream. But there's nothing supposed to be in our bloodstream. It has to be pure. Now, if your body has any food particles in the blood, then your, your body sees this as an enemy, even, even though it could be organic food particle. And it'll produce antibodies to attack. And then you start to have pain, inflammation, as food allergy symptoms. This is the beginning of your problem. Every time you eat this food, your body will start another attack another round of attack. So that's why when you start to eat all these foods, then you start to have chronic inflammation. And then the more foods you eat, the more and more foods leak into your bloodstream, the more and more food allergies you have. So have you heard of this? Somebody has all of a sudden food allergy to some foods and then they start to have more and more allergies. That's because all these undigested food particles now polluted your bloodstream. And now you have polluted, polluted blood what happens is that all this polluted blood actually will have to be filtered through your kidneys. And now your kidneys are overwhelmed 
because it's just way too much for your kidneys, and so your kidneys quit working. It's so weak. So that's what I see in a lot of people who have weakened kidneys. And when your kidneys are weakened, your kidneys' job is to balance the pH. Now your pH will not be balanced. Your body will be acidic. And if you eat a lot of the meat and animal protein and the carbohydrates, they have a lot of uric acid. And all this uric acid, uh, acid waste cannot be detoxified or pulled out of your body through the kidneys. And now they have to be recirculating in your blood. And again, this blood now will have to go through your liver. Your liver's job is to detoxify solid foods. Now it has to do double jobs, solid and liquids, the blood. The blood circulates through your liver eight times a day. And now your liver works like a sponge, a filter. So it gets congested, and then the liver gets weak, and then it quits working. And so now you have sluggish digestive system, you have sluggish circulatory system, and then what happens is all this pollution in your blood, actually, they raise uh, radical free radical levels. These are free radicals. And the free radicals, they will punch holes in your blood vessels. And so your body naturally has to produce uh, cholesterol. That's your body's um, natural band-aid to patch all these um, injured uh, walls. walls yeah. Okay, and, and so that's why you have higher cholesterol. And then the more and the more patches, then the more and more cholesterol levels your, your body will have to produce. So that's the reason of high blood pressure and the cardiovascular disease, that's the root cause. So root cause is really to learn how to work with your body to heal the leaky gut and to purify your blood so you won't have the higher inflammation and the higher cholesterol levels. Rip was assigned to engine company number two in Austin, Texas. We're incredibly competitive here at the, at the fire station and we love making bets. So we were out on the porch one night and we kind of made this little bar bet to see who had the lowest cholesterol level. So the next morning we, we drove to a lab, got tested and uh, the results came back and it led to a discovery that J.R. James Ray, our resident redneck, had a cholesterol of 344. Pretty much means you're knocking at death's door. And so what we did in an act of solidarity is the next day we went about eating a plant-strong diet to basically save his life and save his arteries. The men agreed to change their firehouse diet. But in Texas, old eating habits die hard. Meat's almost a sport in Texas. I have several good friends that they're barbecue teams. They're, that's what they do. That's their sport on the weekends. Texans are serious about Texas, the barbecue. Kansas. <laughs> Well, guys associate being manly with eating meat. And if you're a firefighter, it's exponentially so. Last year, for example, there were 133 uh, firefighter fatalities in the United States. 52% were from heart disease. Our number one killer uh, of in the line of duty deaths for firefighters is heart disease. After just three weeks on his new diet, JR tested his blood cholesterol and it dropped 148 points a decrease of 43%. His results inspired the others who also saw their cholesterol drop and their energy levels rise. As firemen, they were not only helping themselves, they were in better shape to assist others. One of the things about being a firefighter is you don't have any idea what your next call could be. We may have a high rise alarm where we have to go up 20 flights of stairs with air packs on, with all of our bunker gear on, with a high rise pack on our backs, Anybody can go down the pole, but not everybody can go up, especially uh, without their legs. And right there, you're talking about an additional 75 to 100 pounds that you have to carry up 20 flights of stairs. You have to have an amazing aerobic capacity and strength in order to do that. Real men eat plants. Real men eat plants. <laughs> you know, as, as firefighters, Everybody thinks that we fight fire, and we do. But over 70% of our calls are medical emergencies where we are responding to heart disease, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, rampant obesity, 
And so we see up close and personal basically the destruction that's being caused by the standard American diet. To me, the answer is just absolutely so simple, it's criminal. And it's just people starting to take responsibility for their health and starting to eat more plant-based foods. It's that simple. Let me understand your question. So allergies in kids, is that what you're talking about? Think about how, uh, what our kids now are eating nowadays. Look at the foods they are eating and all these processed foods and all these um, high sugar, high gluten foods. So they do cause a lot of leaky gut syndromes. And also um, all these undigested foods, they, they become the feeding grounds for parasites, for candida, for fungus, for virus. And so a lot of people nowadays I see they have um, candida overgrowth, and so that's why they have uh, cravings for sugar, for carbohydrates, and um, so it, for, for kids and for grown-ups, it's the same thing. What we have to do is to go to the root causes. We give them foods that are high in enzymes, or we have to substitute enzymes, you know, make sure their body can break down the foods so they can absorb them. And then we need to um, go to the colon and heal the colon, and then we purify the body, and then um, basically, you know, it's the same process for kids or grown-ups. But there is hope, so don't feel depressed. Now you understand what, what are the health issues your body are trying to go through. So it doesn't matter what symptoms or what labels, it all comes to the root causes. When you go to the root causes and heal it, then you don't ever have to wonder about, you know, what am I going to get next time? What kind of problems I'm going to get? Well, I, I would just be careful of the pasteurization, too. They're pasteurizing everything now. You know, they're so afraid of the quality so bad that they're afraid that they, they have to stop disease that when they pasteurize stuff, a lot of times you'll turn them into histamine. So you're going to clog with just the pasteurization. That's why some children are allergic to milk and then they outgrow it. You know, your, their immune systems get better and they can handle it. Well, all the enzymes that you need to digest the milk are killed. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, so and watch, the the watch who's in the microwave, because the microwave is killing the digestive enzymes. So there's lots of things you can do in the home to, to help that stuff out. You know, just make sure your enzyme is high. You know, that's what you're really looking for. And that comes from, you know, really well-grown food, fermented foods. Yes. You know, I mean, all of that is, is uh, take a look at some of those things. And, you know, a lot of the recent studies now are talking about uh, gut dysbiosis. Um, everything today, you know, um, talk, they're, they're realizing that we have about 300 trillion bacteria in your gut. It's a virtual ecosystem. Um, and when that is off balance, it's called gut dysbiosis, which causes leaky gut. But when that's off balance, everything's off balance. And what causes that to be off balance is uh, processed food, diet, sugar, stress, pharmaceuticals, in a big way, um, mercury fillings. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many things that cause that. Um, it is reversible. You can heal your gut. Um, that is the good news. We don't want to just tell all the bad news. But yes, you really can heal your gut. I, I help people do that. I'm sure you do the same. Um, but you know, just remember that you know, and all of us are off balance a little bit. If we've ever, you know, we've all taken pro uh, antibiotics and some pharmaceuticals and eaten some processed food. And I'm sure some of you have maybe been under a little bit of stress in your life. Um, <laughs> so we all are to some level, but it's when you get, you know, when it gets extreme and the, the candida and the, yeah, yeah, and the yeah. leaky gut. So. I uh, think, yeah, I want to add a little bit to your question. One thing um, I, I kind of always tell my clients is that um, you want to go with local foods, if possible, and in-season foods. So even if you get some organic foods from uh, Mexico or Chile, you know, if it's out of season, it might not be the best foods for you and it might not have a lot of nutrients because when they pick it and have to transport so far away, usually they pick them when, before they were ripe. And so the foods don't have enough nutrients. Well, there's, there, there's a few things. Like when, when if we run out of something on our farm, I actually substitute with Brookdale Fruit Farm up in Hollis because 
I know how good those guys are in traces. Now, they're a conventional farm, but they test all the time. They're constantly making sure that they have all the minerals. They're, they're in balance, and they create really good sugars in their food. So it doesn't always mean, I'm not a big, like, organic's better than, than conventional or conventional's better than organic. It's really in the flavors, the look. Learn, 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 learn that look about it. it it's really, um, and, and if you get to know your farmer, learn, learn how he's growing stuff. You know, because it's really important on, on, on how they look at the soil. Do they care about the soil, you know? A lot, UMass, it, like, the conventional agriculture departments are so funded by the Monsantos and stuff that they want to deal with pH, where we deal with calcium. We look at calcium as most important, and we balance to that. Where, where the typical conventional approach is to look at pH and then play God in the system, and we're not looking to do that. We want the microbiology to create the enzymes with the plant and to create that life in the soil that, that creates really high energy food. You know, as, a, um, uh, as part of the farmer's market, these are the questions that you really need to be asking Dragonfly and all the other uh, growers. Um, all of your questions do influence how they're going to grow the vegetables. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, it really is. You know, that, that's, that's the other thing is that, boy, the faster we can get these tools, the more we're going to force the farms to, to grow better food for everybody. No, that's the key. Are the farms worried about pesticides and You know, I haven't sprayed for pesticides in like three years. You know, it's really, if you can create, well, actually, I did this year, I, I was having really, I, with this dry weather, I had trouble with our potatoes. We were okay for a while, but I couldn't keep that. I, with potatoes, you've got to have that bricks level at about seven and a half for us nutritionally. And, and, and when it gets to six and a half, the, the Colorado potato beetle gets in, but we we have a pretty good organic for it. But but it got it got in on us a, a little bit. Um, two years ago, I could walk in the field. You could see the Colorado potato beetle in the grasses. The field was empty. We didn't have a, a we'd have a bug in the field. So it's really about the nutrition and the balance. But again, it's like really we're the same way in the fields as the body is, where. We run microbiology, and when you're trying to change from a conventional system or a regular system, it takes time. We have to constantly feed those microbiology down there. It's like we have to add that fermented food to the land because, you're, because they're out there fighting and doing battle to get into this balance situation. And it's all about balance. It's the same thing in our bodies, same thing in the soil. It's not really much different. Are there any other concerns, questions about cancer? I was just, um, go ahead, I was going to, if there were other concerns about cancer, because the movie had a lot to do with um, diseases and well, this cancer. is a disease, um, <laughs> the arthritis disease, did one of you say it was kind of maybe due to a magnesium deficit? Um, I deal with a lot of clients who have arthritis. Basically, there are two major types of arthritis, okay? One type is that um, your body doesn't have the enzymes to break down the foods, and also, um, which causes, you know, problems with weakened kidneys. And so, kidneys, uh, of course, uh, ba balances uh, pH. So when your kidneys are weakened, then your pH will be off. And so usually you are too acidic, your body. And then all this uric acid, from the foods you are eating, from the protein and the carbohydrates, um, they, they will be deposited in your body, in your joints, causing arthritis, and if they are deposited in your uh, muscles, causing fibromyalgia. So that's one type of arthritis. Another type of arthritis is called um, pseudogout um, arthritis, and you've probably heard about it. And basically, um, they are um, calcium that without the balanced magnesium and, uh, you know, vitamin D3, then the calcium actually will be deposited in your body. So they cause arthritis as well. So it really depending on what uh, type of arthritis you have, whether it's caused by uric acid or it's caused by uh, calcification. And then we deal with them differently. I mean, the only thing I think that I would add to that is um, arthritis is one of the many autoimmune diseases that's caused by poor nutrition. Yeah. Poor nutrition. Yeah, out of, out of balance. You know, they're saying now that um, all doctors and dentists are repairing problems that have, we've, that have come from poor nutrition. And when the th we're in the third generation now, it's getting nearly impossible. If it's one in three for women now, one in two for men, if cancer is the incidence now, what is it going to be for, for our kids? Oh, we've got to do something now. 
Um, I know it's it's getting pretty late and we're like an hour beyond. So um, I'd like to just um, thank the presenters for their time and energy. They were absolutely phenomenal.